Okay, so silk. Um, the thing to install from source, like I said, same thing with Yap, is much easier to install than Yap's plugins. There is a live CD, same one for Yap. It's an old Fedora 14 one. Um, and now they have RPMs for certain versions. I think it's Red Hat 5 they have it, but it's only 32 bit. Next slide. So Silk has some optional ones. You can do country codes. iSilk actually, I believe it requires it. Uh, and it's now in the documentation. You have to read Python and it crashes, uh, which you have to grab and convert. But there's instructions on, some, on the website for it. DNS lookups it'll do for you. IPv6 if you need that. And here's information. Um, you have an install handbook. They also have a really good analyst handbook. I believe all machines have internet access. So if you search Silk or NetFlow, I know it's handbook, it'll come up. It's really good. Next slide. So we're going to do some build familiarization here. Um, learn, how to, learn how to crawl the RW cuts, which is how you read those binary files. You don't have to convert it to ASCII, like yeah. Uh, so commands are piped from a workflow. The same thing as Linux. So you'll do RW cut, command, command, command. If you have any questions, just shout them out. Next slide. Um, so the build fill, you need yeah, the Python dev. Next slide. All right, so basic commands, right? So feel free to open up your VMs, play along. Uh, you're going to do, we'll show where it's at. It's yeah, still folder, right? And it's encrypted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super secret. Squirrel password. Yeah. Yeah, it's up under uh, data cell. I love that. Okay, so basic metadata on a silk file. RW file info and the file name. So this one is going to be 2012, gives you tap complete 0501-1400-1500.rwf. Raw flow. We'll have a break in like five minutes. Yeah, so this is just basic metadata on the file. Um, important things. Uh, tells you the version itself you're working with and how many flow records are in it. This file has almost 600,000 net flow records. Um, also, you should the command line that we use to build the file. So we'll get to this later, but there's a thing called RW filter uh, that I use to actually create this file. So if you're using some tools, um, We'll actually keep a running history of what you've done to the file and how you got to that point, which is very handy uh, if you work with multiple net flow files. You can track what you've done. Cool. So that's how you get your metadata. Next one, your bread and butter is RWCut. And RWCut allows you to view those binary files. And uh, for saying this one, file along is slide 44. So Mike, what is the num hyphen direct do? So that took, that's um, how many records you're going to print out. So in this case, just list the first 10 records. Okay. So if you didn't know, could you also put what? Uh, pipe it to less at the end? You, you can also pipe it to head or, or less or okay. yeah, and more. And, or more, more. Yeah. So just text at this point so you can do standard Linux things with it. Okay. You are curator? Or you are curator? Yes. You are duration. Yes. So this is kind of like this wrapping, uh, but you've got your standard depth flow field, source yes. IP, depth IP, source port, depth port, uh, protocol, uh, number of packets, number of bytes, flags. Yep. So remember the difference is this one is what? Bi flow, right? Uniflow. Uniflow. Okay. Um, so notice, let's see what else here. Um, so here's the flags. So here's a reset, or sin, push back, sins. And then you can also do specific fields. So if you're only care about, you know, uh, let's see. So Mike, if you want to clean out what, what that looks like, you can do certain fields, right? Yeah. Okay. You want to do that example over here? Yeah. We'll kind of go through each field. So this is much better to read here. So start time, your source IP, your desk IP, protocol, protocol at 6 is TCP, 17 TCP, 
typed in. Um, you can look that up on Wikipedia, I'm sure. Uh, your starting port, your destination port. Uh, so I should add that uh, the fields right there are listed out as zip, zip, proto. Those also have numeric numbers, you know, one, two, three, four, that all correspond to different fields. Sometimes you're looking at some documentation, these numbers. Yeah, I, I usually do one through ten. I think twenty-five is the I, ICMP or your pinging stuff. So the next one is RW total. And that counts how much traffic is matched with specific keys. So what layer four protocols, TCP, UDP, are running? And that's uh, slide 45, so bottom wall. RW total, can you do the command there? Perfect. So this is great. So you can see all the different protocols, right? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. What's protocol one, Mike? Here's a question. Uh, ICMG. Okay. Good question. Uh, you said object code I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think that magic in there. Unfortunately, no. no. That'd be great. You add -on. You start to just know them. Yeah. Um, Actually, no. So when we go to iSelf, iSelf, which is a nice GUI, you can do plugins. So if you want to do that, I think it's all in Python, too. Um, any questions? Yeah. Uh, so okay. Uh, back to the fun color for us. So, what's protocol tool? Two. Uh, that's an excellent question. I don't know. If anyone wants to look that up on Wikipedia real quick, um, I don't know what that is. I don't know what 50 or 58 or 103 is. Those are new to me. I know 6 and 17. You want to find it? One is Okay. Two. Two by GMP. Oh, that's, uh, what? that's routing. Yeah, inner gateway router for multi cap. Well, 50, 58, and 103. 50 is the end cap security killer. Which is second list in your VPN stuff. Okay. 58 and 103? 58 is ICMP for IPv6. Interesting. Yeah. And 103? 103 is protocol independent multi cap. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So the, that was the last one is your video broadcast. Cool. So then again, you can see the number of records, which are your unique flows, the bytes, and packets. So okay. So that's RW total. Next is RW unique. So it's like that one, but with more options. So if we want common names for store, servers, source ports, with at least 50 flows, that's what it allows you to do. Um, you can also do server port pairings. And Mike, do you want to do an example? Yeah. So and we didn't get to RDB filter that we'll get to that in a little bit. It just filters out uh, its case TCP and UDP. Is this okay, uh, color schemes for terminal? You like anything different? Fine. Okay. No, there's no, not. not. No. Okay. If I can give you one, put it on. Yeah, it's in Mike's transfer folder. So, Mike, what's your MC uh, so, uh, yeah. MFL? MFL. Okay. MMC and AIL, and then it's like NetFlow or NetFlow class. Mm -hmm. uh, that slides right there. Yeah. And if you want to go ahead, there should be a bro write up PDF, and that has summary of the ITOP data, which you can look into. If you want to go ahead and start looking for fun stuff in some of the other. Yeah, files. That is in the share. In, in what? Your employee share. Oh, yeah. The slides are my employee share. Yeah, um, the, the bro write up, which is all the fun activity found in all these PCAP is in there. So if you want to cheat, look at that. So RW is correct? Yep. You're right? Yep. So um, we can see all our fun information here. So Mike, do you want to talk about this? Uh, sure. So it's just um, SIP and S port, and then counting how many distinct destination IPs each um, source IP talks to, uh, and then just sorting it. Um, so in this case, we just want to look at common servers.
Okay. Anyone try the banana bread? It's really good. So we left off on RW stats. So this generates top N, bottom N lists and overall stats. And the question is, what does the distribution of bytes, packets, bytes slash packets look like? Bytes per packet. Thank you, Mike. Interesting. You uh, Distribution of bytes, distribution of packets, distribution of bytes per packet. This is from slide 47. Yes. yes. The RW stats one? Correct. RW stats. Yeah. yeah. Those, Last uh, one. Yeah. You know, slides on here are off by two because I added a couple after their credit, credit slides. Slide 47. RW stats. <laughs> Uh, any questions on that? Good. So, our W stats continue. So, now we're going to look at the top 10 destination ports. The command's right there. I'm just going to do the field, and you do deport, port, and then you do the top. So, we have 80, 443, 53, 137, 135. What? 137, 135, what? That's for Windows login or something. That bio stuff. That bio stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, 8089. Interesting. What's that? Splunk. Okay. Uh, Drew's the Splunk guy here, by the way. Uh, 445, 49156, 881, and 88. So this kind of gives you a nice layout of what's going on in your network if you're unfamiliar with it. Or you're going on a network that you've never been on before. So, how would you go about taking 49156 and breaking down what that is. Mike, how are you? That is an excellent question. Um, so we're in an alternate version of that question. If your corporate policy says that HTTP will only be hosted over port 80 and you see 89 or 88, on there as an alternate HTTP port, and you're looking to do policy compliance, how would you find the source? Yeah, great question. Um, let's wait till we get the RW filter, and if I have an answer, I then um, ask me again. Okay. So we did the top 10 source ones, and you can also do it on percentage based cutoffs. Do that on top of it. Is the copy and pasting working on VM player for everyone? And here's this one. Yeah. Any comment on that? So that's just anything with greater than one percent of the total uh, records. Okay. Okay. Record, record is synonymous with uh, flows for silver, right? So a record and flow is the same thing. That's cool. So now, next one is RW count. Example. No. Oh, question. Well, I tried to understand the stats. Yeah. So percent record you say the overall ten ten percent is belong to four eighty. Yes. Yep. But then that doesn't add up at hundred percent. Uh, right. So this is just uh, looking at things that are greater than one percent. So there's a lot of little stuff too that. Uh, so is that going to do the inverse of that? Showing this. Uh, what the bottom thing? The bottom end. Uh, that's an excellent question. Um, I think you, you can look at everything and then you look at tail. Okay. That's probably how I do that. Because it should be still that in 48, it should be more close to at least more than 10%. Of the traffic? Yeah. You can give it dash dash bottom. Oh, okay. Yes. Do you want to run that real quick? I'm kind of curious what the, the bottom of the dash dash bottom? Yep. Yeah, I, I don't know every flag for every command, right? There's a lot of little stuff in here. Um, right. Reports. Yeah, so this is uh, a lot of high ports, right? A lot of ephemeral ports. Interesting. Great question. So RW counts is the next one. And that's basically your binning over time. 
And in this particular example, we're going to break it up into five minute increments. It's a little bit easier to read. So the five minutes that's that dash dash bit size equals 300, 300 seconds, five minutes. So you can do whatever time you really want for the data over time. Next slide. So the question is why are there bins after 1500 if the traffic is from 1450? Quick question. Does anyone know? Exactly. Yeah. So the it'll just to, uh, he said because the flow started before 1500, but ended after that, which is why that's the case. Yeah. So your flows will end on two reasons, right? Uh, one, it's the flow finished, or two, there's a time cutoff. I think what default it's 30 minutes. Usually 30 minutes. Uh, yeah. It depends. Sometimes you're collecting on routers, it can be a lot smaller. Yeah. You know? so, fun fact. That's just for memory and computational purposes, right? For, when you're uh, collecting flows with packets, you have to keep state uh, and element memory or other resources. Uh, you're going to need to age off those uh, that state after a while. And the next one is how does this output differ? Right, so there's a different load speed for hard to do count uh, where we'll chop up the data differently. This one, it actually ended 1500. Uh, this load speed assumes that you want to. Uh, Will the flow uh, and context where it exploded? Um, you assume that the flow happened at, at the instant it began, so it's not spread out over time. But all it spreads out over time. So if you're looking at you know bytes in this five minute interval, it's uh, spread evenly throughout the flow normally. But with this other load scheme, it's the whole flow happened at the flow. And then another one on that slide that says the above is nearly identical to other new stats. About that sure. So it, it just the point is, as with uh, any powerful tool set, there's a lot of different ways to do the same thing. Um, so if you if you're trying to figure something out, you can't figure out one tool, but you look at a different tool. Um, it, you know, depending on your background and, and how what you're familiar with, uh, one thing might be more or less intuitive than something else. <laughs> All right. The Swiss Army knife, R W filter. This is really nice. It's going to save you a lot of time. So there's switches for every flow attribute. So if you want to see where your top web servers are located, pop that in there. And bam, now we know what they are. Right here. Question? What does that have to do with the other guy? I like NetFlow. Pun on the I like turtles YouTube video. Any questions on this? Pretty simple so far? Right. So the question was top web servers. Keep in mind that it's just filtering by source port here, 8443 and 8080. So it's not actually, you know, if you've got web servers running on different ports or if you've got things running on the ports that aren't web servers, you're not going to see that in this output. Yeah. Now there's this looking at single directional flows, so which is looking at there and back again. Ah, excellent question. So silk is unidirectional and this is just unidirectional flows. Um, there's a sub command that you can uh, meet up your unidirectional flows, but I didn't do that in this data. Okay, yes, yeah, so this is just one direction. All right, so how would you change this query to look for exfiltration? So you could look for, instead of source port of 88443, you could look for destination port of 88443. Cool. Great question. Alright, uh, next one is RW scan. And in my labs in the next section, we'll use this to get a bunch of data really quick. Basically, two algorithms to text scan. If you're really interested, then you can read up on them. Um, they're a little bit beyond what I want to cover in this class. Network for reconnaissance. Yeah, so uh, it's found some talks about the network networks for the scanning. Next one. So, pop that one in. So, here's this. Um, I 
Are you showing the flags? Uh, yeah, here. They're looking for resets. Yeah, so note that there's no resets and things on those. And each one is one of your packets, which is a little unusual. And the size of less than 24 gigabytes. Yeah. I don't know if we said this explicitly, but um, the idea behind these self commands is it, it's a lot like a Linux command line. You've got these commands, you type them together to, to form a, a workflow. So oftentimes you start with RW filter uh, to down select your data, and then you filter to some like RW unique or RW stacks. Uh, and then oftentimes it's uh, RW cut. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the RW filter is going to output an ASCII stream, which is the uh, RW sort, I guess, and then handle and so, so actually by default, it's still, uh, everything in binary. So when you're typing from one form to another, it's all kept in a binary format. Very small, very end. Very light. Okay. It's, it's a little more computation so, cheap process. So you took off the um, uh, RW, uh, what is it? Filter, top one? Uh, the sort? last one, the sort. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, the sort's a regular Linux command, yeah, yeah, right? The standard okay. Linux sort. Yeah. So the RW unique is the one that's doing the binary to ASCII conversion so that it can be displayed on the screen? Yep. Okay. The other one would be what? RW cut. RW cut is sort of your standard uh, yeah. dump to ASCII as well. Okay. Yeah. And we kind of picture that some of the commands have got to be up front in order to do their thing, and then some are, are more display focused. Or... Yep. Yep. And the Silk yep. Analyst Handbook is really great to kind of get up to speed with it because they will they'll start with like two ones, like just filter and cut, and then they'll keep adding until you get the yep. kind of larger ones you see here. Okay. If you want to, you just run RW filter, then type it to RW cut. I just type the head for display purposes, but um, yeah. If if you so I'm give you the whole yeah, so that's just your great you know bytes plus then 2048 back 23 and no resets or bits, but all the traffic that matches that criteria. The next one then is IP sets, and essentially it's nice way of summarizing your data and it describes collections of arbitrary IP addresses. It's supported by the RW set tool, intersection, difference, union, and it can also take IP sets as parameters. The example is you can build an IP set of all your web servers and then profile for traffic. So Mike will take you through that example. So a uh, couple of examples here, uh, a couple of commands for this example. Um, first, you want to build your IP set, so you um, or start with the text file. RW set build to take our text file and actually turn it into a binary IP set that's still full understand. Uh, in the text file, I use this index here with 255. You can also get cider blocks of you know, uh, slash 24, uh, or just in individual IP addresses online. So we take RW filter. Uh, Give it a zip set, so we're saying we want our source address in this IP set, which in this case is this uh, IP range, and we're just going to type RW cut. Uh, so this is a pretty simple example of using IP set. Still power IP set, you can take something like uh, one of those early RW filter commands where we're just grabbing uh, web servers, and you can create an IP set just with those arbitrary IP addresses, and then use that later IP filter command uh, down select or, or profile your data. So it's good for building whitelists and blacklists and things. So next is bags. And that's the fun track. The loud track. Uh, bags are like sets, but they include the volume. So you can convert your RW scan output to a bag to flow counts. And there's a command how to do that right there. Alright, so an IP set just contains an IP address, it doesn't contain any other information. Bags also contain the IP address and, and some other, uh, usually a volume in here. And there's a separate way to do the output from that, right? Yep, yeah. yeah. So in this case, uh, we built uh, a bag using the RW bag field command. And then I can create a bag here. And we can use the output with RW bag. So in this case, we've got the IP address here, 
and the convert modes. Right, so, so then I guess that I can set all these patterns, these IP addresses, but that I also have this other information. So, yeah. Yeah, good question. I was new year about the case here, but under what conditions can we use that? Um, that's a good question. I haven't used them a whole lot in practice. Um, I guess if you have uh, statistics in your baseline, your your uh, web server and see how many uh, loads it's getting day by day, um, and you want to get that information in a consistent binary format, you can do that. that. So you're saying it's not going to be like summary statistics that you can then create mm -hmm. for a lot faster calculation for yeah. a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Do you want to repeat what you said? Oh, um, yeah, so basically with some summary statistics, um, or you know, I feel like some aggregate data you want to keep that around. Uh, so I've got a simple example here where we're just taking a yeah, RW scan and then RW filter uh, to look for scanning. So, so two different ways to look for scanning, you want to put that together in a bag. So in our, our RW filter example, we get grab a scanning, create a bag out of that. Uh, so in the PowerPoint, there's a error where the uh, dash and use the wrong dash because PowerPoint autocorrected, autocorrected for me, uh, which takes that if you're talking printing dash and on head. Cool. So here's uh, you know our simple scanning example based on how to be filtered. We just want to limit the potential 10,000 flows. We can do that in the RW bag tool. We can say, I only want to see record uh, IP addresses that have this minimum number of flows. Once you would take our, our two bags from our two different scanning examples and uh, use them together, put in the records of both, and then flip the output of that. So, uh, one example how to use bags. Uh, I find that's more useful than bags than what I do to get at, uh, but the therapy needs them. Uh, so, I guess to get back to your earlier question of how you might drill down on some of the uh, protocols we looked at earlier, some of the summary statistics where you're looking at you know, top end protocols, um, what you can do is go into RW filter and just filter on that protocol and then uh, look at uh, you know, just source IP addresses or destination IP addresses. Uh, it depends really on how you want to splice the type of data. Uh, but usually, you often start with RW filter. Uh, and then go to one of the other tools to look at statistics. So that was it for insurance silk. I was looking for dirty years. Uh, like then, then there's a silk handles handbook online that goes through a lot of detail, uh, a lot of different examples. If you really want to get into this. Yeah, we just pulled out some more interesting ones. The handbook is a little dry, but it's a really great tutorial. <laughs>